figured I should dress appropriately. <laughs> hey internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Raffo. The Lost Metal comes out tomorrow! The final installment in the Wax and Wayne saga and the ending of Mistborn Era 2, assuming Brandon doesn't accidentally write more. As a reminder, the plan with Mistborn was originally to have a trilogy of trilogies, with the Final Empire era, a 1980s-ish set, and then finally one in the Space Age. However, Brando got bored over a weekend and wrote Alloy of Law, and then wrote two more. Oopsie poopsie! Brandon has described them as the adventures of two allomancers from the roughs who get sucked into big city politics and crime. It's like if Clint Eastwood had magical gunslinging powers and starred in a 1910s New York City version of CSI, along with his sidekick, Simon Pegg, playing a barely reformed, lecherous pickpocket with the ability to freeze time. If you haven't read them yet, I don't know how you couldn't be completely sold on it after that. And if you have read them, but forgot to reread them before this next release, I got you. Spoilers for Mistborn Era 2. Alloy of Law begins with the most cinematic prologue I have ever read. Waxillium Ladrian, lawman and great great whatever grandson of Edgard Ladrian, better known as Breeze, shoots his way through a ghost town in the roughs with Lessie, basically the love of his life, trying to bring down a serial killer named Bloody Tan. They split up, and Wax finds a gallery of dead people, then confronts Bloody Tan, who has captured Lessie, claiming we're all puppets and and that someone else moves us, Tan yanks Lessie into the path of Wax's bullet and kills her. Wax then puts a bullet in him. Whoosh! The Alloy of Law! Five months later, Waxilium is back in Elendel, capital city in the Elendel Basin, the land of plenty formed by Harmony himself after the Catasandra, which is a Greek-slash-French combo word meaning the end of ash. He's back leading House Ladrian, because his uncle and sister died in entirely unsuspicious circumstances, leaving him as the heir. He doesn't take to city life very well, but still has PTSD hard from Lessie's death. Eventually, he gives his guns to his butler to store somewhere, and decides to do right by all the people he has responsibility for now. Be a good little boy, Waxy. Doesn't last long. Wayne shows up and gets Wax to start investigating the Vanishers, a group of bandits who've been robbing trains in mystery ways and have started taking hostages. Wax gets engaged to Steris Harms, who no one likes at this point because we all want him to go with Marisy. They go to a fancy wedding dinner. Hoyd is seen talking to the happy couple, and the Vanishers turn up, taking Steris and shooting up the place. Wax and Wayne, still funny to me that this story takes place on a planet without a moon, plus Marisy take out 31 men on their own, then get blown up the next day by Wax's very loyal butler. Quick reminder, Wax and Wayne are both twin-born, meaning they each have both an allomantic power and a ferrochemical power. Wax has access to allomantic steel, making him a coin shot, and ferrochemical iron, a skimmer, storing mass. According to Wayne, who has apparently memorized all of the combinations, that specific combination of powers is called a crasher. Speaking of Wayne, he has allomantic bendaloy and ferrochemical gold, making him a slider and a blood maker. They manage to survive the explosion by Wax breaking through the floor with his stored weight, and Wayne taking the brunt of the flames. Leaving as nonchalantly as possible, the trio head to the Vanisher's hideout, where they find evidence that Miles de Guter, Dagute, because Scadriel is French, another lawman from the roughs, is behind this. The gang gets on a train to investigate one of the robbery sites, and Miles attacks. Wax manages to push him off the train, and they hide out at Renette's, who gives Wax a fancy, fancy gun. Vindication! They make a plan to intercept the Vanishers at their next heist, with a series of quick changes by Wayne and Wax hiding in the vault-style train car. He, of course, ends up in the Vanishers' hideout, and there's a big ol' gunfight involving two very anime-style henchmen, push and pull. Miles eventually captures Marisy, and Wax has a convo with Harmony and finds his trunk with his old guns. Thanks, evil butler! Round two. Fight! Wax rescues Steris and the Vanisher's kidnapped gunsmith, then deflects his own bullet out of a speed bubble to kill Tarson, the Colossus blooded pewter arm. Wax takes a prolonged beating from Miles, all the while Marisy had the room in a slow bubble while Wayne got the constabulary. And thus the Vanishers were ended. Marisy watches Miles' execution, where he speaks an almost death rattle. One day the men of gold and red, bearers of the final metal, will come to you and you will be ruled by them. Worship Trell and wait. 
She goes and meets Iron Eyes, Marsh, who gives her a book on hemallergy. Wax is apparently doing his brother's work. Wax confronts his uncle, learns about large-scale insurance fraud, and steals Mr. Suit's appointment book. Chris has an essay about the metallic arts that's real interesting. Shadows of Self! In the prologue, we see a very inexperienced Wax team up with Lessie for the first time to take down Granite Joe. Lessie was totally going to shoot Wax before somebody stopped her. Once again, someone else moves us. It's been a year since Miles' execution. Wax and Steris are wedding planning, but they get interrupted by a chase scene with the Marksman, a Robin Hood-type bank robber employed by the set. Wax sees bloody tan in the crowd and loses Marks, though Wayne eventually nabs him. Of course, he then gets shot by an assassin, who in turn gets shot by Marisy. They ain't the only people who get shot today, though, as Constable Reddy brings Wax to see an underground political auction turned bloodbath, with over 30 high-profile criminals dead, including the brother of the current governor of Ellendale. Wax goes to the Terrace Village in Ellendale to get leads on steel runner ferrochemists, while Wayne does his penance at Ellendale University. Marisy notices food shortages are increasing the unrest on the streets of Ellendale, and manages to save the governor's life from a spiked guardsman. Cadmium has its uses. Wax and Wayne find the body of Idashwi, who Wax knew growing up. She died by a spike through her chest. Somebody's doing heme allergy. On his way to question the crazy guardsman, Wax talks to Harmony, who surprisingly talks back. He tells him about Bleeder, the rogue Chondra, and mentions radio and aviation that haven't been discovered yet because of how cushy Ellendell is. Wax and Steris go to a party with the governor, and he tells her a story about a misstruck coin from his uncle. Looks like this. The same coin Bleeder hid in the crazy guy's forearm. My insides hurt. They don't want to wait in traffic, so Wax launches them up to the top of the skyscraper using a fancy grappling hook from Renette. In the party, they see displays of different elementic metals, including the lost metal, Atium. Melon flirts with Wax, and then he hears Bleeder in his head, talking through his earring. Potential for wireless communication via hemallergy? Could that... Mm. Another video. Wayne and Marisy impersonate their way into the party, too, and Wayne gets slapped by Sophie Tarksell, claiming he stole her father's invention of electric lights. It's a confusing day for Wayne. Wax tries to catch Bleeder, currently hiding in a servant's body. They both jump out a window, defenestrate, and the chase is on. After getting pinned down in an ambush, Melon shows up and they collectively kick butt. She goes to a rendezvous point at a tavern, while he goes and hides Lord Harms on top of a random building. Marisy is at the scene of another murder. The survivorist priest that was to perform Wax's wedding had been pinned to a wall with spikes through his eyes. Now religious tensions are rising in the city. Wayne arrives at the Temple of the Common Man, honestly one of my favorite sequences in the entire Cosmere. Melon gives Wax the Chondra Acid, and we learn that Pa'alm was the Lord Ruler's personal Chondra. She's done some stuff. Marisy and Melon talk religion at the precinct, with Marisy sharing the belief that Kelsey is still kicking around. Bleeder caused the flood, which in turn caused the food shortage. Melon shows off for Aridel. Wax does some detectiving and finds the carriage that Palm used after her art installation, including some glowy stuff on her robe. He finds Bleeder near the governor's mansion, then chases her into the safe room, where apparently she shot the governor's bodyguard and escaped. Melon recognizes the glowy glowy as being from the Chondra homeland, and Wax has a conversation with his uncle on his way there. Marisy finds a secret key in a secret book that goes to a secret safe in the secret room, which holds secret letters about the governor's secret... secrets. Wow, there is always another. She gives them to Aridel, recently named the Lord High Constable. Wayne and Melon talk accents, and Renette delivers a special bullet for Wax, who is busy meeting Tensoon. Wax and Suni Pup walk through Credit Shaw and talk about Vin, then find a torn up book from Bleeder. Oopsie! Condor are secretly in positions of power like the Survivorist Priesthood! Wayne runs away from a mob, then hears someone speaking with the wrong accent. Wax and Tensoon get chased by a new hemallergic construct, known in the fandom as Chimeras, created by a single spike of trellium charged with an unknown attribute. Shifting humans into a more bestial canine form, with thicker skulls, elbows and knees that bend backward, and pure black eyes. Wax climbs up through the old pits of Hathson into the sewers 
attempts to escape, and then heads to the governor's mansion. There, he confronts Bleeder, wearing Governor Innate's body, who manages to escape. Wayne gets rolled out of a closet and gives Wax Renette's special delivery. Bleeder sheds Innate's bones and becomes a coin shot, though not as skilled as Wax, who chases her across the city to Eastbridge. She takes off her mask, it's Lessie, and Wax has to shoot her again. Marisi convinces Melon to wear the governor and give a speech to calm the gathered crowd. She does too good of a job impersonating Innate, making the people hate her. There's a scuffle trying to prevent Allomancers from the set from rioting the crowd into, well, a, a riot. Aridel arrests Melon slash Innate and claims control over the city by martial law. He calms the crowd by promising to root out corruption among the nobles. Wax and Bleeder fight on the bridge, with Bleeder saying a lot of manipulative, but not necessarily untrue, things about Harmony's influence. Wax eventually manages to shoot her in the head. Again. She's initially unconcerned, but realizes Harmony has restored control over her. Renette's special bullet was made from Wax's earring, an old hemallergic spike. Rather than be controlled again, she kills herself. An hour later, Tensoon arrives and explains that Harmony sent Pa'alm to protect Wax in the roughs. Wax hates Harmony for forcing him to kill Lessie again. I mean... <laughs> Wax sits alone by a fire while everyone else is celebrating the elevation of Aridel to governorship. Wayne offers to back Sophie Tarksell's inventions. Milan fakes the death of former governor Innate, and Marisi starts to research Trell. Steris is present for Wax, offering no words for what can be said. Wax lays his head on her shoulder and weeps. Sorry to end on a downer, but this video is about as long as I dare let it be. Tomorrow, I'll release my summary of Bands of Mourning, so be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. In the meantime, check out all the artists in the description. Support me on Patreon. Love you, Doug. Follow all the socials, and of course, read and find out. Wayne runs who- Rain one- Ah. Excuse me.